Okay, go for it. Okay. So we brought this slide. Great. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the March meeting of the Houston Beekeepers Association. I'm Joe Powers. I'm the uh, club president. Uh, we also have with us today um, Kyle Wolf. He's our secretary. He's running the technology tonight. Mike Simmons, who is our vice president, he's our speakers and prizes and stuff. And Joe Richardson back there, she's our treasurer. She's taking, uh, taking in dues and uh, checking everybody into the meeting. So welcome everybody here. And um, I think we have a good meeting tonight. Uh, also want to talk about a little bit, uh, Wendy Hager, she's not here tonight, but she is our mentor coordinator. I think you've seen Skip. There's a way to contact her. I think it's mentor at HoustonBeekeepers.org. She's online with us too. And she's online. Hi, yes. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Can they hear? Yeah. Okay. So good. So, and we've got Wendy. I'm going to ask you this: How many mentors do we still need? Uh, either one or two. We need. We have two mentees that we need to match up. They're in West Bell area, right? Yes. Yeah, so easy. So anybody wants to take on a couple more? You one of them? No, I better. I'm, I'm just going to need another mentor. Uh, mentor. Are you in West Bell area also? Oh, darn. Okay, where, which, which part of town are you in? Okay, we've got people out there already. So um, anyway, the, mint, the people that my wife and I are mentoring, they've ordered their bees. I know. Steve and Dorothy's guys have ordered their bees. So I haven't talked to all the other mentors, but I think people got their bees ordered and got their students and stuff. So it's going along. So this is our first year to do this. I think it's going to be great. So upcoming events, we've got the Rodeo Ag Venture booth still going on that Harris County Beekeepers is the main coordinator for. It's on their calendar. Um, and I looked, I checked it before I came over here this evening, and it looks like the only volunteer that looks like they might need one more volunteer for three o'clock this coming up Saturday. Look to me like they got everything else covered. So you might want to email Harrison. There's a link on there to email Harrison to find that out. Um, and then if you want to go to more beekeeper clubs than just this one, the Harris County Beekeepers meets on Tuesday, the 22nd of March. Um, and then the biggie is uh, Central Texas Beekeepers Bee School, Bee School is on Saturday, the 26th of March from 8 to 5. And that's at Brenham High School in Brenham, obviously. And that is great because basically in one day you can get as much education and more focused than you can come into beekeeper meetings all year long. So you can knock out in single. What just happens if you go to more? On the old oh, start video. Disconnect audio. Uh, today we got James and Sherry uh, to come from us to us from Texas East Hawk, right? They were uh, born and raised Southeast Texas. Uh, they owned and operated a successful beekeeping and honey business. They held multiple board positions in both their local club and the Texas Beekeepers Association, the state organization. Uh, they are credited with developing a mentor curriculum that has been emulated across Texas. Uh, they teach beekeeping at all levels, traveling the state between bee clubs, seminars, and conventions. Uh, they exclusively teach at their Texas Bee Supply instructors, uh, and they make their classes fun, educational, sharing their knowledge and enthusiasm for learning beekeeping. Oh, got it. Uh, today's topics: hive splits. <laughs> Our bios sound probably better than you really <laughs> desire. Y'all ever notice that with anything? Well, we can make you laugh or not. Question. <laughs> well, so that part is um, not, not reconsider. I want to add to your announcements, Joe. Okay. Also, June 25th, kind of local to you, is the TBA, Texas Beekeeper Association, mm -hmm. the Summer Clinic is going to be in Conroe mm -hmm. at the uh, convention center there. So that's a mm -hmm. that's another good uh, day event day mm -hmm. event yeah. <laughs> that folks can really learn a lot from. We'll be there speaking as well as a lot of people you all have seen before. So. And I know of another one. This coming Saturday, we're doing the full-blown version of this class. Uh, live and in person in the bee yard at the uh, Dayton store, yeah. Texas Bee Supplies. 
and we encourage any of you that like hands-on demos for for uh, splits to uh, join us there. Okay. You're welcome. I'm glad you did that. Um, I start this program off with our slide to make sure that everybody's getting the free benefit out of out of us being Texas B supplies because um, this didn't cost any you a dime today. We don't charge the clubs to come. Um, that's on behalf of Texas B supply. Also, if you have uh, developed a youth mentor program, a youth mentor program, we're happy to help with that as well. So keep that in mind if you've got any kiddos coming up this way. Yeah, that's bees and suits, suits and, and everything. All the necessary equipment to, to support it. It is. We're here for you. <laughs> also, the Texas Bee, Texas Bee Supply Monthly Magazine. I'm the editor of that monthly publication. It goes straight to your email. Anybody here see that magazine? Get that magazine? So, excellent. Excellent. Well, so. it's full of good, timely articles and it's free. We like the word free. So that works. Also, the free monthly webinar. I think I've seen a few of your names on that. Hopefully you're getting to sign up for that and, and you get to join us first Thursday of every month. Obviously, we're the, the 1-800 number and our TexasBeeSupply.com. We've got bee helping questions. That's all for free. YouTube channel. We're on there a few times. And then, of course, our classes. You know, we have hundreds of, of, uh, of topics on videos on the YouTube channel. Uh, splits, finding queens, uh, varroa control, you name it. There's 155 to 200 of them. So uh, it, it's really helpful when you've got a specific item you want to go to. Yes, sir. What time was the uh, the, the TBA at Conroe Convention Center? Mm -hmm. The twenty fifth. What time um, does it start? I don't know the hours, but, 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 it, but it starts early. Eight, 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 yeah. eight in the morning. Trying to get eight in the morning. That's a great event. Mm -hmm. Sherry mentioned we'll be teaching there as well. We're not sure what our classes will be yet, but uh, usually in the years past. There's been uh, attendance that just would amaze most people. Very similar to what Michael Kelly gets with this school. This is just growing and growing in church. That was just as well. Moment. I'm just up here killing time while they're doing yeah. whatever they're doing. <laughs> We're trying to fix the clicker. <laughs> I can tell him to click the slides. I don't know why it's not. Out. Maybe your USB thing. Is it at? That's all right. Yeah, Sherry and I teach beekeeping in clubs like this. We travel doing it. You don't uh, have another USB. Our, our store location in Dayton. Uh, cool. We're currently doing two a month. Uh, this coming Saturday, we have a dual event that we're teaching a live uh, uh, in house full version of the, uh, as I mentioned, of splits. But we're also mm. teaching Montgomery County youth That's how to do splits on the same day. So we'll go into those same okay. colleges two times. So I'll pay we'll attention to that. Yeah. Split, split and they were quartered. <laughs> Don't get a lot of activity. So I'm gonna push Kyle's head. All right. Push it. Push it. Next slide. All right, we're going, we were invited graciously by Mike to do a split class um, in order for y'all to kind of be prepared for this season coming up. I think it'd be fun to know who, who's uh, comfortable with splits up to this point in time in the weekly career. A lot of you, I kind of thought that was gonna be the case. So nearly half. I love he calls it a career. <laughs> well, it, it kind of How is. many are making them uh, making good money? Out of the hands that got raised. The good money. Good money. Yeah, the fine money. The fine good money. When your honey is not four hundred dollars a pound, that's what it is. <laughs> like like right. diesel. <laughs> it's like diesel, well, right? We rode in right. Sherry's car, so I can leave my truck home. <laughs> right, Kyle, you can get the next slide. Let's let's talk about some reasons to make splits. Okay, can we do that? Sure. Uh, I think that's a real interesting way to approach it. Splits can be or can accomplish a lot of things for the beekeeper and for the bees. Um, one of the things we primarily think about is that's an opportunity to prevent swarming. Uh, kind of a logical approach to a, a man-made split as opposed to your bees doing a, a natural split where we lose them. Uh, other reasons for making splits, one we don't think about quite very often, but that's varroa control. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get a brood break in a colony, uh, that's a very effective natural means of role control for those who do not want to participate in the chemicals or essential oils. Uh, it's, it's a great approach for natural brood break. Some other reasons you make splits? Reduce your weed yard. If they're growing. Uh, you can do that. If you're growing and you don't want to keep growing, you can make a split and give it to a fellow beekeeper or make a little bit of money off of it. Income. That's income. another reason. Income, sure. For sure. 
Or grow your bee yard and make income. Grow your bee yard. Or for the income of selling them and just the reverse of that uh, for the uh, opportunity to recover losses. Mm -hmm. That each year we incur different levels of losses, but the average beekeeper does lose columns, uh, be you commercial or be you hobby beekeepers. And this is your opportunity to recover those and not have to spend money to replace them. Uh, you just salvage your frame, salvage your boxes, put them back into use by making splits. It's a uh, split created from drawn comb that's, that's already intact and ready for bees grow so much faster. Uh, it's, just, it's just amazing to not have to draw a foundation. Exactly. So, so some good reasons. All right, so timing. Timing is, well, almost now. But what we've been waiting for is queens. Queens being available. They are not quite available. We've been waiting on the drones to get going good, and that just takes nature. Beekeepers, can we can control a lot of things, but we cannot control nature. When they're ready, they'll be ready. Now, they, we might could get cells right now, but that would be even maybe a stretch. I'm not sure that you could get a capped cell right now. Um, it's, it's really and truly when we make splits, the availability of queens or queen cells or drones enabling us to generate a queen. You know, not just, not just uh, you go out into your bee yard and you, and you pop it open, and uh, looking there, you see some drone cells, and you go, oh, there's a drone. It's time for queens. And that's not it. It's got to be multiple drones. It's got to be prolific drones because what's being represented within your colony is only a, a reasonable fact similar to what's taking place in nature. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about uh, bees being um, uh, made, of, queens being mated in nature, then it's a little further down the road than what we might think is looking inside our individual colonies. So spring, that's obviously what we're all anticipating, um, is about to officially start. About to officially start. 21st, 21st. 21st I think, isn't it? Equinox. 21st. So we are just days away. Just because the calendar says doesn't mean that we're ready, but we're getting very, very close. Summer splits and spring splits are almost the same. The difference That a beekeeper can go wrong in spring during an after flow. Right. Whatever we do, even if it's incorrect, even if we disrupt the brood nest, if we put the, the center frame on the outside number nine or ten position, they'll still straighten it out because they have they have the woman power to do so. I thought they meant that <laughs> to do so. If they have to, they'll cannibalize it, bring it back in the center. But anything we do, shy, of, I start to say shy of killing the queen. Not even that would be true now as long as we have our drones ready. Well, this next bullet point says minimum six weeks before the nectar flow. Now our area where we are, Southeast Texas, nectar flow, eh, give or take a week, is mid-April, late April, first of May, right? Through July 4th, we can almost put a pin in that if you've been around for very long. It takes 43 days from the time an egg is laid till it's a forager bee. So we have to have, in order for maximizing our honey production, with anybody that's followed our show, we do that program as well. You need that time frame in order to not create an issue with the split and still do honey production. So that's kind of where we're sliding in on this scale, is to make sure our timing is tries to be about six weeks before, so we've got time to build our population a little bit get our, our split in that honey production phase, as well as our production colonies. Yeah, a split that's created um, with from outside of that time frame before or after it certainly doesn't mean that it's not going to work and be prolific, but it may just mean that, that you missed the opportunity to capitalize on the honey flow of whatever area you're in and whatever that uh, target plot or target uh, plan is. Uh, so, you know, whatever it is, regardless of where we are in the state or the nation, uh, find that, that target flow and then back up that number of days. Six, six. And then you'll know that your colony will have the opportunity to have foragers in place mm -hmm. to help capitalize on it. So March and April for spring splits and July and August for summer splits. Um, really, because we have a, a fall nectar flow um, for, for new beekeepers that aren't, aren't aware of that. It's typically goldenrod. Some other things, some asters and so forth. But that's kind of our parameters 
All right, you can go to the next slide. Yeah, the fall, the fall flow is nothing we ever count on because it's usually your arrow it's usually left, left, left for our bees uh, till the winter. It's like freezing. A lot of a lot of people may like golden rod honey. More people do not like it. There you go. And, but the bees don't know the difference. They don't know the difference. All right, we were asked to include cells in this presentation, which we don't normally. So we're going to just for you. Yeah. Which is good. Now that's all right. We love talking about it. So queens, the very first bullet part we talked about was queens available. Available. You may have needed to order your queen, depending on who your choice supplier is, months ago, because it really and truly takes pre-planning for this. Queens don't just just because they're available. Drones are available doesn't mean that your supplier is going to have them when you need them. And I can't say this loud enough that you need to have a queen in hand at home or in hand before you make your splits because that phone call from the post office or that phone call from the supplier that they didn't make they didn't they didn't back off the you know, do this. We work off the off the off the, off the number of days that it takes for a queen to uh, emerge from a cell is 16 days from egg. Uh, but that means absolutely nothing based upon when that was either grafted or how the larva was uh, actually utilized for that. It may be 14 days, it may be 17 yes. days by the book. And if we go, okay, on day 15, it's time to put it in, and we go out there and that queen emerges in her hand, mm -hmm. then we have an issue with protecting it. We'll oh, talk about protecting right. it in a while. So you may need to order ahead. And there obviously it's early in the season, but you'll see already that queen availability that we were. We were in mid-April, and now you're probably looking in the night to get a queen at, through Texas Bee Supply and probably most of the reputable suppliers. So you know, that, that's kind of a topic slide. on its own, in that, especially for brand new beekeepers. You would think that bees would be available year round. I mean, rabbits and raccoons are. I mean, why not bees? But we don't fully understand the concept of bee season uh, and the concept of how nectar flow is required for bee season to occur. And uh, it's just something that uh, affects not only the nucleus colonies, uh, but also our queens in the production of them. So this slide's talking about nurse bees. One of the um, key factors in success or failure of a colony, and I'll just go ahead and tell you, even the best of, of colony splitters have lost a colony to a splitter to It's part of it. It's just part of it. But having a good population of nurse bees will go a long way in ensuring the success of that split. What about forager bees? Do we need them? Not as much. Not much. They kind of got a stigma attached to them, especially in the commercial operation that they're queen killers. And in a, in a split, in a massive split situation, you're not so worried about the foragers coming along. So let's not focus on the amount of bees, but which bee we're getting in that split. And that's going to be nurse bees, one to 10 days old. That's going to be the bees that are on the larva. Okay, we need to at this point, if you're in splits mode, you're at least second year beekeeper, and you need to start making sure that your brain is kind of keying in on that biology part, where we know where the placement of, hive, the, of the hive is, where each group of bees and what their duties are by age. This all matters in the splits world, because if we're just grabbing foragers and throwing them in a box, you're not going to get a split. That's not, that doesn't make, bees don't make the split. It's which bees make the split. Well, that's true. And very much like the drones. And that uh, if we don't have a, more than an adequate population, if we don't have an abundance mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of uh, nurse bees to put on top of our bees, on top of our brood, then it's very likely we're going to fail through, through just the, the basics of chilled brood. Mm -hmm. uh, so many things can go wrong. Your queen can be fine. But if the calf brood and the larva are not able to, to be fed and mature, then uh, the whole concept will fail. And the, to me, I can't think of anything worse than beekeeping would be to take, to take a perfectly good colony that's got ample population to split, uh, divide it in half or quarters or whatever the case may be, and lose all of it. Uh, you could have left it alone and not done the thing. So we want to ensure that we want to ensure that we're uh, taking the right actions, fully understand. What the ramifications of those actions. And then if we don't know, maybe we should hold off and get some, get some clarity on what we're looking for. So then we went ahead and added the, the summer 
qualifications in here as well. So if you're making a spring split, you're going to need at least four to seven frames of food in the double beam situation. And that column. And another column. The one you're about to split. And some are, you're going to be one at least one or two more frames because it's going to have to be a heavier end brood um, split for summertime. You've got to think about, and James said something about nectar flow and the importance of that and the forgiveness of that, really and truly, spring the forgiveness of that. Summer, we don't have that forgiveness. So, really and truly keep this at heart that you've got to have a much stronger colony to split in summer. So, if you're going to if you're really wanting to do it, spring is the more optimal time. Less, less work has to be done as far as care. You're going to be able to feed until nectar flow and then should be able to bounce off. But summer, you're going to have to work really hard to keep those girls. And that doesn't make, make perfect sense because uh, a stressor of all honeybee colonies are periods of potential dearth, uh, periods where the beekeepers are doing things that they're not supposed to be doing. And both of those items tend to occur during the summer. We go, is this column the queen or what's going on? Kind of like coming out of winter. Do we have a queen or not? Uh, so the concept of how many bees need to be available to uh, support the forage requirements of that colony go up the further we get into summer. I love being on the just point. I'll point and click. My mouse has done that. Sure. <laughs> All right, so now we're there. We're trying the types of splits, and, the, and one of the first one we're going to start with, you're probably the, the old timers, not that you're old, old OL. Old old uh, those that have been doing splits, and you'll be surprised that we're going to start with a walk away. Go ahead. Walk away splits are probably, I, I'm going to say they're the easiest because um, just about anybody can do it. You don't even know. All you need to know is to be able to that high ID. You've got to be able to identify your components. If you can identify components, you can pretty much be successful if you're, if you're doing it in the early spring. Go ahead. It is easy, it is acceptable to just walk away from a split. We have this little formula, we didn't invent it, but it kind of works out, the math works out. One plus two plus two equal five. Most splits are made into a five frame hip box. Can you just go back, Joe can't oh, see. Right. Talking about no, let's go back to some joke. Oh, sorry. Does <laughs> that work, man? Okay. So you're going to start with your very first frame is going to be a one nail larva. Now this is going to sound a lot like that B word, biology. Yes, it is. But you really need to know what one nail larva looks like. And it's kind of simple, really, when you think about it. An egg, uh, three eggs. The minute that it starts to lay over, it's a one nail larva. Isn't that funny? There's an egg sense of straight. As a larva, it goes, I'm alive, it rolls over. <laughs> like a baby in bed. But the first time you'll start to see a C, you really need to have some of that in that split because I'm going to give you kind of the end of it. You're going to need them to generate their own queen. Next slide. So we've got our one, one frame of open larvae, two frames of capped and emerging brood. So brood is capped, three days an egg, six days larvae, capped at day nine. Then it emerges at anybody know? Day 21. They do. There's one being shot. There's being shot. Day 21. So you need this brood to be some nearly emerging because who is that? That's your next nurse piece, right? So we really need all stages in there. And that's why I'm really paying attention to your hive ID and what's on these frames is going to make this successful. Yes, it is the, uh, the the concept of grabbing the frame that has the most capped brood is incorrect in a walkway split. Uh, the mm -hmm. capped brood is awesome for population, right? But uh, we need to start off with that beginning balance yes. piece. We did so one cap, one frame of open and one day larvae, two frames of capped and emerging. So the darker, and just to give you a, a hint, darker the cappings on the capped brood, the closer to emergence it is. Bees don't wipe their feet when they come in the house and when they walk across it as they age and the heat of the hive darkens the, those cappings and the darker it is, the sooner it is to emerge. Okay, right, next slide. Plus two frames of pollen and honey. And what is that? Come on, somebody. That's your food, right? Yes, yes your resource frames. That's your bee bread. You have to have food for these girls, right? 
Now, ideally, you want to have some of these frames with empty space, ideally. But think ahead that these emergent brood cells are going to open space. But ideally, you've kind of got all of those of those with a check mark. No, in a long place for that. Okay. A colony that's extremely large. Um, if a brood nest is split between two boxes, quite often you can just separate the boxes, determine where you're going to put them. With. But the concept being to separate the boxes, you really not have to do any frame manipulation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But if you do have to manipulate, then you've got to ensure that you've got the pollen up against your brood bound by the honey. Mm -hmm. Don't break up the brood nest from the standpoint of, of uh, recreating nature from thinking that your way is going to be better than, than what the bees want to do. And because they don't always fix it. And, and you're exactly right. Those five frames that you placed in there, because that does equal the five frames that we need. They do need to be the brood in the center and those resource frames on the outside. So do make sure that that's there. And you know, frames. it also could be possible and very likely that uh, if you've got that colony that, that you're, you're worried about it swarming, uh, that just separating the two brood boxes and making splits out of it is not the end of the equation. It's only the beginning of the equation, but it may very well be that it's time to add that second box right back up there. Mm -hmm. You could just be starting it where you needed to pyramid it or bring some of that brood up and move into that additional box. Basically, what you just said was a sit down split. That's when you've got a double deep and you just literally you check and make sure that both boxes kind of are yeah, close enough to the same. There's all the resources or yeah. at least viable enough to be independent and you just set it down. Works beautiful. We've done that time too. Too. So you move those five frames in either a new box or you put it in an eight or ten frame box. It doesn't matter to us. If it's in an eight or ten frame box, you're going to need to put some empty frames to the outside edges. We we wouldn't put the resource frames all the way to the outside. They'll they'll work their way to it. But you can move as as you feed well. You can move those resource frames a little bit, but you better make sure they've got some beside that brood as it keeps going. You know that eight or ten frame. Uh, discussion. Uh, we're actually looking at a five frame move and then talking about an eight frame and a ten frame. If you put five busting frames in an eight frame box, you've reached that that uh, eighty percent capacity very that we quickly. talked about very often. Where it's time to expand. Mm -hmm. So, eight, just a good point to make is that eight frame box management is a little more difficult than ten frame box management. Much like nuke box management mm -hmm. is considerably harder mm -hmm. than either of the two. Anybody eight frame? Eight frame? You do. So you just got to stay a little ahead. You got two frames shy of, of just put two frames ahead. And it works, doesn't it? It works very well. Start all these splits with a re entrance reducer. We just want to make sure the girls have time to kind of get their act together and that they don't get robbed out by somebody, one of the neighbors. So just keep that entrance reducer small till they get established and then you can pull it out. Well, and, and again, that also brings up good. I've got to quit saying that. But, but a, stre a, stressed, a stressed colony. Is a colony that's in jeopardy if something bad happened to it. Well, be, it like be it small hive business, be it queen failure. Um, you know, sometimes when we lose a queen that we've uh, added to a colony, it's got as much to do with, with the beekeeper creating chaos within that colony as it does with the, with the uh, the bees within the colony not accepting her. So we kind of need to play, or, play a cool hand with it. Well, one thing we didn't talk about was where is the queen because we weren't worried about it. It's a walk away. We made sure that there was larva in there. We made sure that there was the ability to make a queen. We truly were not worried about it. We could have made five splits out of one double deep colony if we had the resources to do so. Not worried about where the queen was. If we got lucky, we found her. That's great. That's just one less high that we've got to look at to see if there's queen cells being built. You can either introduce a queen to that colony or you can let them generate their own. And I think that most of us know that it's pretty easy to tell which colony has the queen when we go back the next day. Everybody know how to do that? <laughs> we're all bees. That's where all these are. We're all bees. That's right. Go ahead. Next, next slide. Do I need to move the split away from my bee yard? Well, and we don't, if there's not a next slide for that. Yes, but you don't have to. Well, maybe there is. Did I add one? Look and see. Check it I might have. Check it here. See if I did put it in there because I thought about doing it. No, I didn't. All right, false alarm. Sometimes my head thinks things and doesn't always go. Uh, so this is the reduced version. The reduced version. If you come Saturday, we'll give you the full version. But anyway, 
you, you don't have to move your splits to another V yard, but think about the ramifications. There are ramifications because we do, we don't necessarily want all those foragers to come back to that, those split hives. It's okay if they go back to the queen right hive, that's fine, but we don't necessarily want them in there creating havoc for those that aren't formed yet. Um, you're also going to have to probably play a, a mix match game to equalize the people because they're going to kind of be lost the and not people. know where be people. They're not going to know where to go because you've heard the old adage, two feet, three, two miles or three feet, three, three miles, miles, whatever it is. I've, you know, really, honestly, it's more like six inches and, and three miles. Okay, but that falls into that. that as two beekeepers get five, five different answers, answers. it's the same true, thing. True, true. Uh, if yeah, you sure. can move them, it's best. Yeah, it is best to move them. Uh, the three miles is the ideal way. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're just following by the textbook, three weeks is the magic number. So you, you can, can leave them back. somewhere for three weeks is right. If you don't, uh, you either have to be willing to adjust the population by doing some brood manipulation, by switching boxes to share the same, mm -hmm. uh, or potentially just allow nature to take its course and allow those that uh, cap brood to emerge, uh, the nurse bees to go through their cycle. And we're going through that 44 day period that we were talking about. Now, a lot of you, of course, if you're in downtown Houston, that might not be more conducive for you to just go, oh, let me go to a neighbor three miles away. Um, really, I bet you know somebody that lets you park your, your bees and have a nursery. First of all, people love bees. I picked my mother. Don't pick my mother. She will make you visit. So, that and if you come check your bees while she's not there, then you get to hear about it for another two weeks. So um, just be careful who you pick to share your, your nursery with. But it is doable. People will let you put your bees there for three weeks most of the time. So that's like the easiest type of split there is, right? Yes. Uh, the downside to that again is the time frame, the time period that it takes to generate that new queen, get her mated, get her back in the box and then go through that 21 day cycle for the first bee to, to uh, emerge, become a forager. And that really slows things down. But if you're not in a hurry, it works great. Right. So this is what you're looking for. And you're gonna see it look a lot like this. Because they're gonna go, ah, all of a sudden they're gonna go, no queen. And they're gonna start going nuts. They're gonna even pull larvae that's not going to go just because of the emergency factor. So this is what you should be seeing four and five days you should be able to see this and go ahead. If yes, then you're just going to wait and be patient. You're going to let whichever girl come out goes out first. You know how that game is played. The first one out sings the rest, right? And then you, you know, we pretend like that's the strongest one, but who knows? But we don't really have a choice when we're leaving it up to them to do the work. What are you going to do with all those sales? You're going to previous slide. Well, they're going to work it out. We're going to let them work, work it out. out. Most of the time we let those, on, when we're doing a walk away, we leave all of those and let them work it out. You can reduce it down to two. And we've taught that. And, and in our long class, we do kind of get a little more in depth with that. But you got to be very careful which two are you going to choose. Well, you know, that, that, the name of the split is a walk away. Right. It doesn't say walk away right, and, and then come go back, back and, choose. and then interfere. That's right. So it's a walk away. And you said, why wait three or four weeks? Because you need to wait and see if you've got eggs. 16 days to raise a queen from an egg to a, and plus another week for her to get ready to go out and be mated. Then she's got seven days after that before she starts laying. Start doing that. Okay, all of a sudden we're, we're some weeks into this. Next slide. Yeah, you know, one of the, I mentioned one of the most uh, upsetting aspects of beekeeping is losing a split or losing the whole colony because you made a split. Something that's, that's almost as equally uh, disturbing is when you lift a frame up and realize that you just killed the queen cell <laughs> and you were dependent on that no, cell. No, we've never done that. <laughs> so never that's a, done that. That's a word of caution. Oh. They don't repair it. They don't. They don't. So if you didn't see a queen cell, and that's when we use that as a segue, Blake's got an article in the upcoming magazine about um, cells and what to do if uh, didn't take, queen didn't take, and so forth, and like queen. So check that out. Uh, add a new frame. That's one of your options of a one day old larvae from one of your other colonies. Let's just start over, but think about this. Before I even go to the next bullet point, you are really teetering on that lane worker age. Three weeks, it takes a brood cycle for a worker to develop and mimic that QMP pheromone. 
So you don't want that to start. You really ought to consider to not. That would be like the third worst thing that could happen. I'm going to start a list. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one, two, three. Use dice and throw out, see what really wins. Add a queen, a purchase queen. This would be my suggestion to you. Add a swarm cell, queen cell from another colony. This is going to be kind of a segue to, to, to treat what you talked about. And that really is doable. Truly, truly doable. Or cut your losses, refund, combine with another colony that does uh, put another queen in our colony. I would use this newspaper method with that. Um, if you're not familiar with that, go to our YouTube channel and we've got a video in there for that. Okay. Cutting Excellent. your losses and refining with another colony. I like that. But sometimes it's easier just to allow that colony to recover and then the next split cycle, try do it to again. do it again. Do it again. Or, That's right. A better set for you. Regroup. Sometimes you can't force things to happen. You cannot. So typical split. Now this is going to be the one we most often hear about and it's going to be involved requeening. Same as a walk away. So we're not going to go through all these individual steps. You still need the same, at least one or two group frames, all right? And I will say that we almost always do two group frames, almost always, because we just wanna hedge our bet. We wanna make sure that we get the, the everything right the first time around. So and during summer, we'll, we'll add two. Add two, that make it three at least. Except you must know where the queen is. Oh boy, oh boy. We gotta find the queen. This time you'll use an introduced queen in split. Speeds up the process by that magic number. So that's a big deal. And big, it, big this deal. is going to make the difference of whether I'm going to that's produce. It is a big deal. It's going to make a difference of whether I'm going to produce honey. One things. plus two plus two is still five. It is. All right. Now, if you'll click this again, how to requeen a hive. Blake, this is Blake Shook. It will show you how to requeen a hive. Doesn't have bottoms. Might hit pause for a second. Oh. oh, you don't have sound? No. I didn't know about Excuse that. me. Hi, Again. folks. This is Blake Shook, Texas Peace Corps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today, I'm going to show y'all we'll introduction. Just a bit. <laughs> Here, I'll play it on, on my. Did you do this? No, uh, that's okay. That's all right. I didn't know you didn't have sound. Here, let's see. If, to hive that needs a new queen. So we're here. going to go through and actually show the process once we've already identified a hive that needs to be show the process of how to clean that hive. One thing is we've got to find that queen. So go for just a little bit of smoke and you can check out our other video on how to find a queen. But for this video we're not going to talk about that because we can always reference back to that video. So we're going to find our queen and we're going to have to remove her from the hive. Debate is always to keep her in the hive. Do you uh, kill her and leave her in the hive, or do you remove her from the hive? I always like removing the queen because even if she is no longer alive, she's still giving off pheromones inside that hive, and we want those pheromones to dissipate as quickly as possible. So here she is on this side. So I give her from the hive. All right, so I've removed the queen from this hive. Now I've got my new queen. You can wait up to 24 hours to install the new queen, or if you already have her, you can install her right away after killing her. It's ideal to wait you know, two to 24 hours just so all those pheromones in the old queen dissipate. But since we're here with this video, we're going to go ahead and install her. So your queen cages come in all different forms. Sometimes they'll have a little cork that plugs up the candy. So you can see we've got candy in here. I just removed that cork so that candy is exposed so the bees can pursue and let her out over the next few days. So I'm going to install this right in the heart of the brood nest, right between these frames and the candy side facing, uh, facing down. It's just going to slip in there right like that. Push that tightly back together. You can see the bees already smell her. They're already running towards that new queen. It's going to take them two to four days to release that queen. I'm going to come back in about seven days and check and make sure I see eggs in this hive. As soon as I see eggs, I'm going to close it back up and give it another week or so before I do a deep dive inspection. And that's how you clean a hive. Simple as that.
And that's, you know, he makes it look so easy. You may have noticed that, that he put that uh, box cage between Everybody. the wood, um, the wood uh, frames between the top of them, rather than down with the wax and brood on them. And, but you may have also noticed that he's running nine frames in there, mm -hmm. which allowed him to do it. So if that were a 10 frame box and he tried to keep it up top between the wood, um, he just, just wouldn't make it. So, be so he would have had to have gone down inside underneath it, pressed it into the wax, and then closed it back up. So 10 frames internal. And when you do that, then you need to be very careful of not drying your queen and honey. And that, can happen. that just really rolls out. So y'all saw how quick he found that queen. And it looked like he wasn't even looking both sides of the frame. But Blake's trick is to look down, if you've seen any of his videos, he looks down at the face of the, the frame, pulls this up, he's looking down here first. So he's checked this back side already. He's cleared it already. So all he has to do is do that. And he can go through and make I will admit, I am not that good. I've got to look. I've got to, I've got to really look. I've got to look for that girl. We find them good and quick, but not that quick. The younger your eyes, the more likely you are to spot yes, them and quickly. Yeah. And Blake turned 31 yesterday. So he's he's a guy, he's still young. He's oh, still got out. Checking in 40 years. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I need to tell him that. All right, so we're, we're, now we've introduced this uh, by request of using a queen cell. Um, and I will tell you, we've done this on a commercial level, but not so much on a, on a hobby beekeeper level because, and I'm going to kind of start it off with this, is you don't go buy one cell. You can't order two cells or five cells or even a dozen. But you can sure, sure take it from a colony that's in swarm. Right. You can order cells from a, a cell breeder, but you're going to get a hundred or a thousand. They don't do in, they don't do onesies, okay? But if you can get them from another hive, one that's swarming or one that you, you know, let get condensed where it needs to, to swarm, but you want to harvest the cells, right, there's your, there's your cell. Uh, wait 24 hours to install. Extras. Do what? The guy that's got 98 extras. They're the guy that's got 98 extras because they're, they're floating around and a lot of these commercial uh, guys are around and they, they bought 10,000 of them and they yeah. might have some You know, they're extra. like an ice cream in, in summer heat though. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they, have a, they have a limited lifespan this quick. By the time the sale is released yeah. from the uh, supplier, uh, quite often they're emerging. I have been, released. I've been the one in the truck that went to get the sales, carrying them back in the ice chest and start hearing things going on in the ice chest as I'm making a beeline to beeline. That was funny. Beeline from this point to the bee yard to get them installed. So it is a timing game. You're going to wait 24 hours to install. Consider covering with a cell protector. And we put this on, and James and I, both, both of our, we agree with this because your bees are not going to just readily just go, oh, it's a cell. They're going to go, oh, it's a cell. And Depending on the bee the condition of the colony. Chew on. <laughs> lots, lots of things happen. Uh, there are lots of different types of queen cell protection mm -hmm. devices out there. Some are metal, some are plastic. Some have probes on it like that. Some have a round top that are made to go between the top bars and frames. Um, the probably the thing that, that disturbs me the most, if you just order some off the internet, you're not aware of it. That particular style is really small. It is. Yeah, it's one that seems to show up more and more when you're looking for them. And so many queen cells will not fit in that. They won't. A very basic small cell has a hard time. Going you really need it. the a quality one. And it needs to be big because I mean, we have had our hands on some that were too small to fit cells. So, what's the point of having it? Um, really and truly. I got to say, tell on ourselves, this was, I don't know, the first or second attempt. Who is that? <laughs> you oh. know who that is. Anyway, we did pretty good. I was pretty proud of that. Um, that was in our own bee yard. So, I mean, we, we did pretty good for first shot out of the gun. I felt like so. I mean, we had a dozen or twenty that came out that we grafted right there at the, the hive. So you can do it is where I'm going with that. Um, you're going to place that little configuration with your cell in it in the bird nest, just like you would have with the the full hive, the full queen. Except this time, you're going to have to put it in an indentation, like the indentation with your finger, and then push that into it, or put that in some. Uh, wood or somehow 
make it stick really, really good. If it's a grafted cell like those are, then the cup kind stays of, with it, don't separate the cup from the right from the cell itself exactly. and serve all of it. Um, I think another thing that kind of comes up sometimes is we look at queen cells and we go, which one do I need to use? Mm -hmm. If not all of them. And there's a tendency to go with the biggest and best one. Um, it's not necessarily uh, you, can, best one. you can read a lot about cells and the more productive queen cells that are out there. And uh, the smallest would probably be best to leave alone. And oddly enough, the largest would sometimes be. are best to leave alone. These three side that's side by side are ideal. The larger ones you run into the queen having broke away from her jelly and re released from the top of the cell. It's too big. The smallest ones that, that we pulled are too old. And that could be viable. So, certainly. Sure. But, but yeah. It's possible. To Ideally, it's, it's that medium size. Okay. Check back in a few days to verify she has emerged. You know, bear in mind, you're, you're installing a 15 day typically cell. So that one's ready to emerge. It's like we were talking about. They emerge when you're not really expecting it. You're not emerge ahead of time. So this is just uh, demonstrating putting a cell down in there and you can see it. Uh, it's got the yellow, the um, orange casing of the cell protector and you're just going to do it right at the top. You don't need to get down and get down in the plane. You can do it right at the top. I Obviously plane straight straightening them. I have a tendency, especially when we have to go down inside the frames to in some way identify the bar on top, make it so much easier. Yeah, the um, mark it, of some sort. It, uh, you know, if, if it's a week or so before you go back out and her comb starts getting blown back over the top of it, and, and instead of having to pull all of them out, you can work off that individual one. Especially if you're doing hundreds. If it's you got it, yeah, lot. you need to know. All right, next one. All right, shake method split. Now I've got two more videos, but okay. now we it's pretty okay. I think that we can that work. Okay, okay. that was good. Can you yeah. We'll talk you through it if it doesn't. Um, this is when I shouldn't put a boy looking for the queen because you all need to look for the queen. But it's if you can't find the queen. If you can't find the queen, then you need to figure a different way. Go again. This and is that, a and that is really common, especially for new beekeepers. One, to either just, just not have the skills to spot her, or two to go, that intimidates me. Mm -hmm. Find her. Well, when the word intimidation comes up, watch this. And if you want, you don't have to turn it up so loud, and I can just talk over it. Doesn't matter. Um, all right. That doing it? Yeah. All right. See it's if everybody can hear it. Let's see if we can. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. 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 We are allowed in that. About recleaning hives, how to find the queen, etc. But sometimes we just still can't find them. And so if you can't find the queen and you just really need to reclean your hive, uh, we've got videos you can watch on how to know when it's time to reclean the hive. There's kind of a, a an effective but kind of messy way to make sure you get that old queen out of the hive. And it entails shaking all the out of the hive, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Again, it's kind of messy. Make sure you use your smoker, make sure you're suited up, the bees and all is like it. Um, but the idea is to shake all the bees out of the hive, put a bean excluder between the bottom board and the bottom box, and then come back in a couple hours, and all those bees are going to go back into the hive, and that queen is going to be trapped on the underside of that bee excluder. One quick note if you don't want to shake all the bees out, you can get a and you can use that to drive all the bees out of the hive. And that way you don't have to physically shake all the bees out. It works a little better and it's not quite as messy. But if you are okay shaking them, and you open up your hive, give them a decent amount of smoke. And then, I know this seems dramatic, uh, but if you go frame by frame, just shake the bees off in front of the hive. Now this was a hive that we have already identified as a new queen. So it's kind of in a weakened state, not a very strong hive. The brood that they do have doesn't look great. And so they really, really need a new queen. So we're going to pull each frame out. 
don't see that word in this green spotty. Some of our other videos where we talk about how to identify the high beams and how to make them high beams. Now we've got our voice tone beams inside this box. So we paste them in there. Mark that box. Most of us don't keep our beads on the ground. We have them on a hive stand. Am I wrong? You'll need to do a ramp. But the same thing applies. The same thing applies. James and I do this system is a tiny bit different, but we'll do this into a, a box. So we'll add another deep box to this colony and the empty bee on the bottom. And the same process, queen excluder, and she's trapped underneath. So this really works. It really does work. But if you do this, like Blake showed, you'll need to do a ramp up to your. Uh, we like to use the box. We're shaking all the bees in turn with that. Not on the ramp. It's a little, little much time. It's always worried about stepping on the queen, but I guess in this case, it doesn't matter. matter. They don't care. We're trying to do all of their head. I don't anyway. think we have to say this, but then once the bees have returned back up there and you found the queen, that's not the time to make the bees. We need to let that column no. settle down. And then before we do it, all right. Before we start over. And the next video is very short. It's one, one, one minute. Hey guys, hey guys so this is the follow-up follow video on how to requeen a hive when you can't find the queen. So we sh remember we shook all those bees in front of the hive, and this probably no more than 20 minutes later. And if you look, <laughs> this is where we shook all the bees. Uh, you can't tell at all. Now sometimes what you'll find, there'll be like a little cluster of bees on the ground somewhere, and the queen will be in that cluster. But this time, you know, we shook all those bees out. We put a queen excluder between the top box and the bottom board, and you know, there is not a single bee left out here. So. Let's see if it works. Now, if you can't find the queen underneath this queen excluder, it's a good chance she didn't make it back into the hive, which which works as well. You know, we're we're confident if we shook all the bees out that well, the queen can't be in our box, so we could put a new queen in. So let's uh, let's take this second box or this top box off. Let's see what we got going on. So we've got quite a few bees down here. Let's. Look at there. There's our queen bee trapped underneath that queen excluder. So it worked. So at this point, then we could kill that queen and install the new queen in our hive. So there we go. It, uh, it does work sometimes. <laughs> hey guys, so this is. Not that we find the queen is really not excluded. And that's a great way to let a beekeeper measure as you're growing your beekeeper as well. You get full exposure of the, uh, the attitude or lack thereof of your colony. You know, 
know what it takes to really get them mad. He knows that uh, even though Blake didn't pull individual frames, when he went back to the check, he smoked. Bird full suit and gloves and, and uh, no sense of uh, stretching the, the, our abilities. We don't, have to like that. we don't have to be killed. Uh, we talked about this a minute ago, but moving your splits, and, and we really want to stress this the further you move your split, the better and the better success. If you can't move them very far, and I think we did briefly go through this. Turn the new entrance opposite from its original uh, orientation. And we've had several beekeepers, especially in downtown Houston, um, that have done a, a reverse. And that way, it, it really, they think they're in a different location. Put an obstruction in front of it, and they'll they'll think that they're in a different location pretty much, pretty much. Then it's side by side, then just swap the boxes after a day. <laughs> you can do that several times even. Think about it. Four colonies are four colonies. Why would you split a four colony? You just going to have two four colonies. Or four four colonies. Yeah, splitting a four colony doesn't give you the opportunity to make a good, good colony out of it. It's real, beekeeping is really odd in that respect to me. Yeah, sometimes a, a four colony can be turned around by, by requeening, sometimes by appropriate row measures, sometimes by switching foundation, by adding additional brood. Uh, kind of goes on and on and on. But there are also times when it just doesn't work. <laughs> There's nothing you That's can do to increase That's the viability of that colony. We've been to classes where, uh, uh, where from the commercial beekeeping level, uh, there's a time to cut your loss, and the time to cut your loss is now, mm -hmm. not wait on it. Go ahead and combine it with another colony. So, as long as you know this disease free, um, and that, that uh, the queen's not necessary in either one of the equations because mm -hmm. we're going without the queen to the next colony and just stop it, let a few days pass, and they go back, split it again because it comes to be split in the future at some point. There's actually, we sat in what you're referring to, I think, is we sat in on a seminar of a, you know, people with lots of acronyms from home to name and they and lots of grant money, <laughs> and they study how long. And how much money it would take to nurse these hives back to health. And the amount of money and the amount of time didn't come close to equating the value of that money. So it just 99% of the time doesn't pay. As small, small scale hobby beekeepers, we love our bees and we want to give them every chance. And we're hey, guilty as charged on that. We do too. But you really need to know when it's time to cut your loss. And put to where you get money up for bad. If you keep requeening a hive, you're just but you're just no person you're making happy is people you're buying the queen from. Right? All right, so manage a new split. Keep the entrance reduced until it's like colony gets established. And typically that's within a couple of weeks, and maybe even less if it's a really solid, good, strong split. Feed your split, feed your split, feed your split, both sides. The mother that you did the split off of and the splits, okay? Feed them until when? Anybody know? Well, actually beyond that most of the time. Now, if it's a big solid split, you're going to, you know, you may get there. You may be able to stop at nectar flow and then finish out, especially if you, but you know, if it's five frames and you go into an eight frame. It, it varies somewhat. It does. Due to the foundation. Are we using new foundation or pre Strong bomb foundation? Uh, if it's if it's a new foundation, then there's no sense in our bees having to build that comb off of nectar that they had to forage for mm -hmm. and reduce our lifespan. We may as well do it off of off of sugar water that we fed. Mm -hmm. uh, that's logical up to the point that we start seeing we're overfeeding by some backfilling occurring within the brood nest where the cells within the queen needs to be laid. It's time to stop when that occurs. Uh, if you're still feeding, when it's time for for a honey super to get to that point, obviously we can't do that. Uh, so when do we stop? It depends on the individual colony, but a rational beekeeper can pick up the cues pretty quickly mm -hmm. as to when to shut her down. Some people would say that it, it would be better to use honey in, in foundation, and I agree with that to the point that you don't overwhelm that brood nest. You know, we talked about stressing colonies, a stressed colony with too much Honey in it is a colony that uh, is susceptible again to small hive bees. Mm -hmm. They'll collapse from hive bees taking over. Plus, honey is not 
front V bread component. Honey has to be thinned down to make to be made into nectar for them to mix it with pollen. So it's kind of beyond that stage. So they've got to back up with the honey. Full frames of honey are not typically used in a big, you know, in a split unless you just have to. Um, but yeah, feeding too, you don't need to feed. And I know that's very out there. But um, most of the time, if you've um, got a small split and you're growing it out, I'd feed. Feed up until, um, even up until nectar flow. I want to get that second deep. We run two deeps. Not everybody does. James has an incredibly good article coming out in the next issue, the May issue of Texas Bees Problem with the Vaccine, about running nothing but singles. Anybody here run singles? Single deeps? I think you'll be fascinated. You by will it. be fascinated. You will be. It can be done. To read it. It's a, it's a good it's article. Cool. And then you would back up that train just a bit, and you will probably be adding that honey super at nectar flow time. Maybe, maybe continue to feed a little bit to draw some comb out. Y'all know that you, when you add any box, whether that be a top deep or a super, and if it's undrawn, continue to feed for a bit. Get them starting to draw that comb out this size and then stop, okay? Get that, because wax glands, they need to be that continual nectar source or they'll shut down. And they'll shut down for a good seven, eight days until it it's, gets inspired again. So you don't want that ebb and flow of nectar. You want them to continue to to wax, to produce the wax. And that brings up another good potential point uh, is a tip that um, if you have trouble getting a uh, getting a, a super foundation drawn out, and you use queen excluders, if you leave that queen excluder off for the first few days. Mm -hmm. Uh, while they start drawing that new foundation and let a fist size uh, area get some, some new fresh white wax on, then you put that queen square back on, your bees are more likely to go ahead and finish drawing that comb out. Whereas before, they have a tendency to just sit on it and nothing happens. And, and one last thing I wanted to say, we talked about reasons to split a colony. I included within that article that I've got coming out with Cherry uh, with TBS Magazine. I say Cherry Magazine. She's the editor and does it. Because all he sees is the top of my uh, head working all day. Another reason to split a colony is to manage the behavior of that colony. There's power in numbers. And if we reduce the population of a given colony that's being overly defensive or aggressive towards us, uh, the power in numbers equation is greatly diminished. And you can calm a colony down drastically by doing that. Mm -hmm. Don't let it get too big if they're not well-mannered bees. Any questions? Obviously, it's a shameless plug. <laughs> Anybody that needs a splits class, we would love to see you on Saturday. We're doing the adult splits class Saturday morning, and then we, um, every year, and this is why I want to pull this back around full circle, to tell you we really and truly love our youth, and we're going to donate our time. So the TBS will be donating at the facility for Saturday afternoon to do the Montgomery County Beekeepers Youth, we will be teaching them how to do split for the second year youth club. So you really cannot lose if you've got youth in your group. You really, you know, I know it's hard to get there. It's hard to get there because you got to have the right people coming in and got kids that want to do it. But if we can help in any way, we'd love to. Well, we also, love to. All, all the equipment's donated. Yeah. Uh, the bees, the, the, their supplies, uh, they're not having to incur, the, the clubs are not incurring expense and the, uh, the parents and the children are not yeah, All right, any questions right. about splits or anything? No questions on chat. No questions yet. Okay, yeah. I keep all meetings, you know, that, that one plus two plus two, what would you say for someone that keeps all meetings? Mediums is a different- One plus um, two plus two does not apply anymore. It, it takes, it takes one. I like, well, to, I like to say one and a half. Mm -hmm. To make, a, to make a date, they, they, when you look at the literature, it shows use two to replace one date. Well, I've even read, and you know, I, I agree with you, um, but I read somebody, I, I should know who it is, somebody that I respected when I read it, that said three mediums is one deep. And I just think that, that doesn't seem right. I but I run three mediums for, to equal for, a double deep. To, to equal a double deep. And that, that, Probably is a little shy of a double the or it is, but I think that you're probably more on point and James is right. It's one and a half. Well, and that gets more back to the, the logistics of, of the 
potential of running a single story for mm -hmm. uh, if you count the number of cells that are available for the queen to, mm -hmm. to lay in, how many she actually does lay in based on the number of eggs she can lay per day, and then add all that up. And is it possible for her to still have room left over for uh, resources mm -hmm. for honey and pollen and a little bit of variables for uh, uh, it's super days where she lays 2,000 eggs or 1,500 eggs? Mm -hmm. And you can tell real quick if it works or it doesn't work. Honey mating is just getting popular. Um, I say it's probably level back out. It started a few years ago, but it's, I mean, it's a, you know, you got a little more management you got to do than, got than two discs. Do what? I said I got two herniated discs a year. Good reason, good reason to do that. And that's Any, one of the reasons for the, the single deep column. It is. If you can work it out, it works. For lifting. It works towards strength. lifting is the primary goal to cut it back and to keep that population down. Are we good? No questions on chat? No questions. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. Good. So, good. No. We enjoyed y'all. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Okay. Am I still on? You still on? Is the light still on it? I think so. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. See? Okay. Thanks, James. Sure. Sure. That was great, as usual. Okay. So just to remind you, upcoming events, uh, Rodeo Ag Venture Beekeeping Booth, Harris County Beekeeper. So go on their website, look on their calendar, send an email to Harrison. They'll put you in there. You get a free parking pass to get in there. They'll see you. Um, to go work. And then Tuesday of uh, next week is Harris County Beekeepers Meeting. Uh, Saturday a week is the Central Texas Beekeeper School. Uh, Tuesday a week is the, or Tuesday the 29th is the Montgomery County Beekeepers. And then in June, June 25th, June 25th is the Texas Beekeepers up in um, Conway. And then our next meeting for Houston Beekeepers will be the 19th of April, right here. Also be on Zoom as well. And our topic is going to be queen rearing, what we just talked about. And our speaker will be uh, Susan Kobe. So, uh, Mike, you? As in Susan Kobe? Yeah. yeah. Oh, she is in. Good job. Yeah, I was, I was, I, I didn't know that. Was, we met, was, we worst thing she said, no, right? Nice. We, we've met her a time too. Pretty smart, right? Yeah, she's nice. Y'all are very lucky. Like All right, so uh, time for gold prizes. So uh, Texas Bee Supply donated the uh, gold prizes today. Uh, we'll start off with, uh, I'm just going to read the last three, 862. All right, we got a, yeah, uh, I like it when you do that. Oh, good to pick. <laughs> but, uh, smoke a few really with the smoker, I guess. No, it's pretty good. Really, really. I knew that one was a Next one is Older than Thank you. Like You're welcome. <laughs> All right, last one, uh, 854. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. I love their school, too, because there's nothing that beats on hands-on experience. So, I mean, it's PowerPoint. And questions are great, but hands-on experience is the kid that on the so. All right. Thanks, everybody. And quickly, hope this bullshit shares up. Thank you. See you next month. Thanks, y'all.